Okay, it is 12.15 in London. Welcome to this weekly charting analysis webinar with myself, Jasper Lawler, at CMC Markets. Well, definitely a, um, an interesting end to last week. Big start to this week in, in European markets. We're seeing quite a big sell-off in stocks, so we'll, we'll discuss that shortly. And uh, we'll see if it's going to end anytime soon or if there's some opportunities to, to ride it down. We have the the risk warning on the screens now. Please take your time to to read those uh, read through those. Any questions at all, please just send them through the the Q and A box or the chat box, and I'll be happy to uh, to answer those as best I can at any point in the in the webinar, which should be uh, about 30 minutes long. So finish at 12:45. There we have it. So as you can see from, uh, you know, I've got some kind of short-term hourly charts here. Um, certainly the the equity, but also to some extent the oil market, seeing some pretty sharp declines here. Um, you know, this is the the Dow Jones. As of the start of Friday, we're up around 18,500. As of today, Monday, we're looking at an open near 17,900. So a 600 point collapse in in just a couple of days. Um, you know, we've certainly seen bigger moves in the past, but given the fact that the S&P 500 didn't move up or down more than 1% in 43 trading days, actually 2% has come as a bit of a shocker to markets. And uh, you'll be unsurprised to hear that the main reason for it has been central banks, uh, most importantly being the Fed, and uh, increased chances of a, a rate rise. Uh, now we haven't got any on the screen at the moment, but I'll just show you quickly that um, <coughs> um, we do offer um, obviously uh, bonds for trading, and uh, you know just to show you here that um, you know this goes a long w this ch particular chart goes a long way to explain you know the kind of fear that's taking place in markets. This is the German uh, it's our actually our chart for the uh, benchmark. German Bund, and you can see here that we're we're breaking some pretty key areas of support. Um, if I can use my line tool to looking through this peak, these peaks here, you know, down to this peak, which obviously corresponds to this spike low down here. We've opened lower today, and one of the kind of hallmarks of this fall off in the Bund, bund price is that we've now pushed up back above into positive yields for German 10-year debt. Um, and so that's a big marker point. And a sim similar things happening in uh, the US. So, <coughs> uh, if I, I don't know if I actually just type, this is always a, a test for, that's our ETF. It's gonna paint pretty much the same picture that you can see here. There's been a pretty tight range uh, but as of as of today, we're breaking down through that support in in the, the treasury bond market. Just using some simple support and resistance analysis here. Let me put that on the full screen. Here you can see that yes, this is um, yes, this is potentially quite a game changer we're seeing um, in markets in the last couple of days. Breaking out of this range that we've been in for a while, the complacency that the Fed just isn't going to do anything. Is seems to be giving way to some genuine fear that the Fed may actually hike rates in September. Uh, one of the main events to look out for today is we've got a speech from Lael Brennard, um, who she is typically a pretty dovish um, Fed member, but the worry is that she'll use a sort of quite lately organised speech today, I think it was only arranged on Thursday or Friday last week, um, to signal uh, a change of heart. She goes from dove to hawk and signals that the Fed may be about to uh, hike rates in September because they're, ju they're just about to enter their quiet period. Normally they're not really allowed to give any speeches or give any opinions uh, about a week or so before the, um, the Fed rate decision. Um, got a quick question here um, just about the oversold nature of the RSI on the short time frame. Um, you know, does that um, does the fact that we're oversold in the short term mean that we're about to see a bounce? 
Well, so the, 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 the trouble with um, the uh, momentum indicators, let me just uh, pull up the US 30 chart here, that same one we were looking at. Oh, maybe I can pull up my own one, actually. I'm going to leave that as it is. I'm going to pull up my chart that I have here with a few more squealy lines on it. And this is our daily chart. I'll discuss that in a minute. But obviously, yeah, pretty hefty sell-off here. Now, obviously, the immediate tempting thought, and um, you know, the question here um, from someone who you know it's they're saying their first time. I'm not sure if that means their their first time trading. Perhaps maybe close to at least. Um, attempting the temp the temptation for a neophyte trader um, is okay. Web enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. It, Nonetheless, that just worth pointing out that the temptation for neophyte traders is to see the market has dropped and think, okay, obviously the general logic in markets is to buy low, sell high, the uh, market's dropped, let me buy it. Um, and then, you know, you have indicators like this RSI, which obviously is heavily oversold down here, um, you know, got as low as 5, you know, when you consider that 30 is, is considered oversold. You know, then that's you know to to some extent appears to be an opportunity. You would think, uh, but obviously we've we've been at below 30 on an hourly time frame since here. Buying all the way down here based on an oversold nature would obviously clearly have been a mistake. Now, obviously, you can you can wait for some signs of divergence in the oversold area, which we're starting to get now with a low formed here, and then maybe a new higher low formed here. That increases your odds slightly. And then obviously you can wait for the RSI to cross back through the 30 area to come out of oversold. Uh, potentially pushing price up near these highs somewhere with an opportunity to, to buy on the breakout. I would suggest that you know, th there's no one good answer to this. Um, whether to use the one hour chart oversold area as a time to buy. The th the thing is it doesn't work by itself every time like any technical indicator just because the RSI is oversold doesn't mean it's a good time to buy. You have to look at the context of it. Um, if we're in a nice strong uptrend and we're just correcting down in the short term then in my mind would be the time to go look at an hourly chart and uh, and think okay how can I use the RSI just to tell me when the market's oversold in the short term and this little dip is over and I'm and I'm expecting a continuation of the uptrend at least to the previous high that would be the time for me to be buying it. not probably in this kind of area when it seems like we're actually seeing quite a serious technical breakdown in markets now as you can see here this I mean we're basically at the um, we've, we've dropped through the 18,000 figure so clearly we'll have uh, wiped out a few stops below 18,000 for whoever was buying down there and with stops shortly below but you can see from this consolidation back in uh, November 2015 along with a few kind of pivot swings in through this year the sort of 17,900 type area I've got it as about 17,920 clearly is um, something you know it's, it, it is a, a potential area of support in the market so that support line in conjunction with an overbought or uh, oversold RSI are two considerations for going along the market but nonetheless to my mind the fact that we're breaking down some of these recent support areas suggests a, a change state of play and while I wouldn't necessarily advocating going short the market except on a very small time frame at the moment um, I think the bias in the market has has switched to the short side for the time being um, and, it, and I think it would, it's, it's certainly depending on how long you're looking to hold on to the trade for um, it, it's it's fairly risky buying the market down at these levels um, after this sharp breakdown I, I think any retracements in the market are going to be fairly short-lived now that said uh, you know the the reasons for these sharp moves um, are, is largely to do with the Fed and I think we can expect some more volatility going into the Fed which is obviously great for trading and uh, you know as much as I'm saying I think the market trend has changed you know often the best move is going against the herd and if we're, if for example this key speech later on from Len Brennard turned out to be a total red herring 
and in fact she doesn't give any kind of hawkish sign which i think is probably quite likely actually um then maybe that'd be seen as a positive thing for the market that actually the fed is not going to be hiking rates um this time around and then we could see an immediate recovery in, in most risky assets um like like us stocks so you know if you think this maybe this speech will be a misnomer give a little a little read around that so you know look at this area of potential support around the 17900 you know maybe wait for that rsi um uh, oversold area to come out of oversold you know you've got a few things lining up there which maybe um you know maybe supports a rebound in prices um it would probably not be my choice but i can i can see there are, you've got m multiple pieces of evidence there why that could work it's not a an outright bad idea in my mind um but i just i tend to favor the the momentum at the moment and um and i, I think the momentum is to the downside bit of a long-winded answer but I uh, hope that was um, hope that was useful, and it has helped us discuss the um, the daily time frame in, in the US 30. But I pull out quickly to the weekly, give us a bit more context. For those of you attending last week, you remember I was saying that um, this was the previous all-time high made in May last year, and what I was saying is that we've basically been consolidating above that. And you know, obviously last week when we were talking, when the price was up here above that consolidation area, I was saying that you know when we get when we break down through that. Um, consolidation area it's probably going to lead to a pretty hefty sell-off and it, you know it has so far you know that we really are in a very tight range to my mind that old high was was the breaking point and um, and, we, and we just heftily closed down there last week we've run through the um, that first possible um, area of support from that old peak you know there's two kind of weekly highs We've closed below there. We're down at the next support. So what we're what the general environment that we're looking at here is support is being broken. And if you look here, this was the resistance we made in July. The resistance held. Resistance held. Support being broken. That's the general time that you know that that is a seller's market right there. That, that's the definition of it. Um, you know you you know we're in an uptrend if support is holding and resistance is being broken at the moment supports are being broken resistance are holding so there's going to be some sort of rebound and so that will be the next test you know probably this this peak which didn't really do much on the way down around the 18100 and then if we can get a decent rebound up to the 18250 will be a test for the market on the upside you know can the resistance hold after the support breaks you know that will be some confirmation that the um the markets in a in a downward track, and what I did say last week, and I'll reiterate today, is that there isn't too much support for below eighteen thousand down to seventeen one hundred. Um, you can see these these couple of weekly swing lows down here. Arguably, up here at um, seventeen, sort of just above seventeen three hundred, I think. You know, just because of these swing lows here in this consolidation area here, with kind of just had a spike down from. Um, could support the market but to my mind it looks like we're heading down to that 17100 ish um, should this sell-off continue we're going to close maybe even just for the day below 17930 always helps to you know if you, uh, use a bit of Fib analysis just to confirm any any potential areas of support. So as I highlighted, I, I think I highlighted the same thing last week. Um, oh, if I actually use the proper high, you can see that the 50% retracement is sitting right there. Uh, but also, you know, the the 38.2 is not as strong support is is also sitting kind of along some kind of you know kind of points in which the markets reversed in the past too. So um, you know, watch out for this area. If we do. Um, again, start showing signs of buyers coming in with you know reversal candlestick patterns and maybe something on the momentum. If you're if you're using that, um, then be aware of that support. Um, I'd say the next stronger the stronger level is here, but you know we may not we not not quite we might not need to get there. Okay, we talked a lot about U.S. markets. Let's move swiftly on to the U.K. It is actually quite a big week for U.K. economic data. Probably going to be a bigger impact on the pound than the UK 100 but let's have a look at the the UK 100 first 
So similar similar idea here, right? We've seen something akin to a, a double top. Didn't quite make it to the old high, but certainly a failure swing to it. So re the resistance has held. It didn't make it through the old high and support's being broken. And you can see here, this is, you know, this is just how markets operate here. We got a, <coughs> this was a, a weekly swing point, which you can see better on the, uh, hold up. You can see better on the, on the weekly chart. There was a high there. And we, we got a strong bounce off it. Weren't able to take out the high and then went up closing below it. So that was a, you know, a big bearish signal by the, the, the lower close last week. And then just didn't really get the chance um, to anyone with stops below those lows didn't get the chance to to close out in those levels today um, we you know we've had a, we've made a gap lower at the start of trading on Monday um, so that you can tell how that previous swing low was significant because basically it sits right in the middle of this gap in which the markets made as it's opened the new week <coughs> So I think it's fairly clear cut from these swing lows that the next area supports about the 6610 and I can't see any particular reason why the market wouldn't want to challenge that unless sentiment really does change on a dime and um and we get more positive again. Obviously these support levels aren't perfect so <coughs> you know we could pull off slightly before it or slightly beneath it but I think that's quite a strong area which could get some sort of rebound um but again the momentum seems to have shifted now to the downside. And it would make sense to me that we get some kind of pull back to this this zone of resistance that was in place for for um sort of like lesser half of last year and the first half of this year before we broke out uh in the in the week following the brexit vote so that's basically the six five hundred kind of area, and that's also the two hundred week moving average as well, so a couple of reasons the market might might want to retest that area. Um, we'll look at the Germany 32. Um, this this trend line that we that we mentioned last week has certainly played out. Um, you know, I said that uh, slightly unconventionally drawn, but a series of nice highs through there, and it's it's tried to, tried to get through once, fallen down. I said last week that this actually looked opt you know this actually looked promising to me for a breakout. The fact that it had come down and uh, rebounded so quickly for a second test it looked like it was going to break higher obviously that's not panned out we've seen a, a bearish engulfing candlestick just about um, last week with a, you know with it starting higher and finishing lower than the prior week and so in the short term you can see on the on the daily chart better that we've, we've got a pretty clean cut double top here pattern and we're r sitting right on the uh, the neckline possibly some different ways to draw this neckline depending on whether you're using the lows or the close there's a series of closes in here at 10 500 so that would be maybe a more aggressive in terms of when the pattern's begun and that would kind of be backed up by this gap down to the next support of this actually low here um, you know this would be more aggressive entry but obviously the exit would be more conservative if you're projecting the height of this um, if we're using the height of this pattern as an idea as to where like, maybe a first area of support would be on the breakdown then I think about 9980 would be based on this swing low here would, where it would be where it takes us down maybe to this sort of swing area down here but if we use, let's see if I can do this all in one go. If we use something a bit more conservative like the 10500, then actually maybe the objective is just down here at about 10180. So we're already on our way there, but to my mind, it look, looks like we've got a bit more way to go we're down through the 50 mark on the, on the daily RSI. And a bit of a sort of head and shoulders reversal in the RSI as well. <laughs> Obviously, the big event in Europe was the ECB last week, and that kind of kicked off this. Um, if you've read, been reading my 
my notes on the platform um, I sort of said something similar this morning in the, in the morning update but equally um, yeah just this general point here that um, the, the drop across the bond markets began with EC President Mario Draghi said that governing council did not discuss extending its asset purchase program um, so the ECB by by not saying anything, uh, not saying it's going to do its its own extra stimulus is obviously that's a concern in in of itself because especially for these bond uh, bondholders who are buying bonds for the capital appreciation, knowing they've got a negative yield, so actually earn, uh, losing money on the on the on the interest, but making money because the prices are going higher, they're all suddenly scared and selling off. Um, because of the fact that the ECB may not even continue its asset purchase program. It probably will, but it hasn't s even discussed it, apparently, in this last meeting. So that was a worry in itself. Um, but there's also just the fact that maybe they're holding off from really saying or doing anything because the Fed may do the hard work for them by raising rates in September. So that's a, that's a dual concern, um, both in Europe and, and um, more globally for stock markets. So if you you know if you believe that obviously that's a fundamental backing for these kind of this breakdown in price. If you think the Fed just isn't going to isn't likely to raise rates in in September, you know maybe you're looking for opportunities to buy in this sell off. Let's um let's switch gears to um to currencies now. I will start with the pound actually just because we have basically a lot of economic data for for the UK this week. Uh we've got inflation which we also have inflation for the US and Europe so it'll be interesting to contrast the three. We've got retail sales, we've also got unemployment data and of course pitting all those together we've got the Bank of England setting its interest rate policy on Thursday. So the bank, sh uh, if memory serves, should have all that data in front of it when it makes its decision. Is that right? I'm t as soon as I say that, I'm tempted to think maybe it doesn't have the retail sales. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look at our calendar just to see if I'm giving you the right kind of information here. Friday. US CPI, but no. Okay, no, I think it, I was right to say that thoughts so, are okay the retail sales data is out on Thursday pre the Bank of England decision so you know set your alerts there set your alert in the calendar um, really it's the it's the it's the month on month figure that gets um, reported the most so obviously expecting a decline after a big jump in July so let's see what August has to bring um, if it is a, you know with with it with a decline forecast um, that's basically kind of coming off the British retail consortium numbers that had a big drop of 1% that's probably scared a few forecasters but the other economic data for the UK has been pretty strong good chance of, a, of beating that data I'd suggest um, Brexit, Brexit fear monger is getting it wrong so far would suggest that they're probably going to get it wrong on this too so scope on the economic data front that'll be but obviously you know even if we do get a positive beat on retail sales it might get a little pop in the pound but it'll be right before the Bank of England meeting so people will probably be sitting on their hands and then let's have a look when okay and then we've got the unemployment data and the importantly the wage data as well um, happening on on Wednesday they'll be the two main ones to look out for inflation is before that I think inflation's on Tuesday but uh, that uh, words from the Bank of England recently have sort of suggested they're going to look through any rise in inflation so that data probably doesn't have as much influence as as the the next two that I just showed so looking at the pound here good to keep the general context of where we are we're in a range so we're in a 128 and a half to 134 range basically um, and you can see that we've we've come off just short of the the top of the range um, basically just with a failure to hold above 134 last week and we've we've pulled off and now we're back down at um, the previous 
uh, you know, the previous kind of swing high here on the daily chart. We've, we've to some extent pushed through it and we're trying to again at the moment. Uh, you could take these these two levels here, you know, so you obviously you can use the highs or you can use the opens and the closes as what you deem to be the most important for the market. But this sort of area here is currently supporting the price. But if we do start to push lower again, then obviously again that support giving way and um, and resistance up here seemingly holding would suggest a bit more of a bearish bias for the market. Getting slammed with phone calls as per usual during the webinar. <coughs> Hold on. Okay, there we are. <coughs> so that 132.50 midpoint um, is a uh, is a key area of support at this point, and will sort of roughly, if we get enough push down, coincide about with the 50 point in the RSI. Um, It, buying so 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 the point is here that we're we're basically making in this kind of short within this broader range we're making higher highs and higher lows and so what we're looking for is at some point that the market to form the next higher low but the difference now is that we have come up very close to that old resistance and there's a good chance that we we come out of this period of highs high highs and lows and just trend back down towards the bottom of the range again so when you can the period at which you can be more confident to buy the lows somewhere near the old swing highs rather than down at the old swing lows is once you've actually broken out of the range and you you, you know you're more confident of turning into a, a trending environment on the on the longer term so I'm positive on the data and I don't think the Bank of England are going to raise rates uh, but obviously we've got the dollar counter to all that's happening in the um, in the UK so uh, you know there's increasing speculation that the Fed will raise rates and that's positive for the dollar and by nature weak for the pound so my feeling is that you know we could um, we could, end up, could end up pushing lower again perhaps down to the 131 which has been quite a, a serious quite a quite a major support um, since the Brexit vote, or just below, just below 130.70, down through here. So I've, for some reason, been t taking my time a bit today. We've barely got through a lot of the currencies. Let's have a quick look at the euro. Mm. Euro very. I mean, I say this every time. Very choppy. Um, so we've got a push up towards resistance, and we sold off down there. Um, we're, you know, we're trying to get down through um, to support here, but very minimal trend. Um, certainly, lots of opportunities to sell support by resistance in a sort of choppy, um, sideways type market. So, you know, if you see signs of a turnaround add an area of support resistance there's quite a good chance it'll get there because there just isn't really any uh, directional bias here and I don't think the ECB helped gain us any extra bias um, probably we're going to be looking for the Fed to, to tell us if we can break higher in the euro if they don't do anything or, or lower if the um, you know if suddenly it looks like the Fed is raising rates got a question on dollar yen so that's good timing because I'm about to get into that right now <coughs> So we're mentioning this down sloping trend line for a while. The market's kind of chopping chopping around it a bit. Uh there we got got up the weekly chart. I actually like the look of it better on the daily chart if we pull out a bit. It's um so that's where we are. We've got the false breakout, we've got the touchdown, broke through a couple of supports, but then even did a little false breakout of this swing low here and then held it, pushed up to one oh four. Now we're back down through the trend line again. So, market basically trying to decide whether the um, whether a do whether a bottom has been put in at 100. Again, uh, from the Fed side, if you think the Fed raising rates, you know, then that's um, you know that's a dollar yen positive sign. Um, all sorts of news coming out of the Bank of Japan. Um, they're they're kind of holding discussions to review their monetary policy at the moment. We did get some rumours last week that uh, they 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 could be willing to push interest rates further into the negative. Um, that again would be positive dollar yen. 
But if you think that uh, actually the Bank of Japan sort of run out of tools in the toolbox and that the Fed was not going to raise rates, you know, that would be a reason to believe this, uh, this trend line sort of going to hold in the end and then we end up breaking 100. Okay, and let's just touch on oil. We've obviously had quite a sharp decline in the oil market. Pull up the Brent chart. So we basically touched on close to 50 uh, and the market rolled over again. Oh, hold on, let me go down to the... So obviously we, um, you know, in this, this most recent rally, we got as far as 51. We pulled back. This time we've got just under 50 and we're pulling back. So seems like some generally lower peaks being put in in oil. Um, you know, the main factors being at the moment this um, this OPEC meeting this month. Uh, but there was a, there were, last week in terms of US production, there was a massive draw in inventories which helped push the prices higher. But then people later realized that actually it was basically due to those those storms on the east coast that um, delayed uh, delayed imports of oil and made production uh, more difficult in the US in the short term. It's not a big long term factor really and the number of oil rigs increased according to data on Friday so showing that um, US producers still quite keen on expanding production with prices around $50. So that's pushed the prices lower. You know, We're, we're going to be in a bit of a choppy range until um, we get the results from this OPEC meeting but if we just if we do pull out to that weekly chart again you can see that basically resistance has held here there's there's the high there's a series of kind of swing peaks it hasn't got through that um, and uh, at the moment we're kind of pulling down we've failed from that short-term resistance come down so resistance seem uh, it seems like the resistance has held here was a big swing area of support that gave way and there wasn't really a big resistance until there and that held so it seems like resistance are holding supports are giving way my, my, my slight bias here is, is to the downside um, even though we're kind of in a range at the moment so 46 is basically in the middle of the 51 uh, 41 to 51 range so you're at the midpoint now which is the, the, the kind of worst scenario for for taking trades you know you want to be shorting near the top going along near the bottom obviously but I would say in general especially on the short term basis but I, I'm looking uh, more favorably to the, the short side I think based on those that kind of long term support resistance type analysis and with just the kind of fundamental idea I very much doubt OPEC's going to freeze production at the meeting this month I don't think um, Iran and Saudi Arabia can come to any kind of agreement and that US rig data just kind of confirms that um, uh, you know that US production still still kind of doing quite well and if anything um, the, the, de the decline in US production is slowing down probably um, so yeah I just saw your question Warren um, so I sort of, yeah I think I was sort of half answered it on there so I hope that helps and I think finally we're completely uh, yeah we're a bit couple of minutes over here but not going too crazy um, hope I'm not making any of you late for your uh, getting back to lunch uh, back to get back from your lunch break uh, but if we just touch on oil uh, on gold sorry obviously gold is very sensitive to the Fed so um, interesting that gold is actually pulling back I in the last few days um, uh, and obviously that's what you'd expect if um, a, a red Fed rate rise was looking more likely um, you know, obviously it doesn't bear any interest and it's based in dollars, so two just obvious reasons why gold would be less in demand if the Fed is in fact expected to raise rates. Um, got a, not not exactly perfect, but working to some degree, uh, trend line down through the highs here. So lower highs being made. <coughs> and uh, this support was taken out, but we found support at the old previous swing point that caused a good old rally higher we did break through what could have been um, support there that made me quite positive 
on the oil pr uh, on the gold price, but obviously we failed at the the major kind of swing highs here, and this trend line seems to be working quite well. So again, it kind of in the midpoint of its range it's been in recently, so not optimal trading scenario. Um, you know, here I'd highlighted that um, the downside looked more favourable after breaking that support, but we did come up and kind of do the same thing again here. So we're in a range; it's it's difficult to call. Um, long term, I'm still quite positive on, on gold, but if obviously the Fed does raise rates, um, yeah, it's going to be a negative in the short term. The one to watch out is obviously one three hundred. You know, that's that's a big level. Um, a lot of people will have their stops below there, so watch out if we get a false break below a. Uh, with you know the, the the banks trying to pick up everyone stops beneath <coughs> and then using those uh, sell orders to to buy them all up and buy the market higher that's certainly a possibility because it's such a, an obvious level at this point um, that lots of stop lo stop losses will be down here <coughs> but nonetheless I think probably if we if we get a close for the day particularly the week below one three hundred then we're probably just looking at a pretty sh hefty decline down to one two fifty again. Um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna end the recording here, but I just got a quick question on the client sentiment, so I can answer that once I've stopped this recording. Uh, okay.